The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling a problem with us out here. Right now, we have the Dow Industrials uh, up 45, NASDAQ up 54, S&P's up 9. Uh, gold contract uh, down 250, trading at 1276.20. We have silver up seven cents, sixteen dollars thirty-three cents. Light sweet crude up 88 cents, 65.95. We're gonna have the uh, EIA numbers this morning. A little bit of volatility in that crude market across the board, man. It, no, See how that and you know the API came out last night. Really, you know, bottom line is not much. Little small drawdown. We're we're using oil. Notes and bonds. Ten-year note down at four ticks. One nineteen twenty-three. Thirty-year bond off twelve. One forty-three. Uh, Twenty-three. King dollar. King dollar down nine ticks. Ninety-four seven twenty. Euros at one fifty. One. 1577 to 1 US dollar. Yen is at 110 to 1 US dollar. Now, we get a treat for you, folks. Uh, you know, bottom line, we're going to go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks. And what the treat is, is the bottom line is that, you know, we have GE today getting kicked out of the Dow Industrials. They're last, gone. Last Bye -bye. stock in the Dow. And we get, a, we get a know how Kevin feels because Kevin was the option market maker for GE in the pit. Oh, boy. Kevin Hinks, what do you think? Where have you gone, Jack Welch? Oh, my God. You know, Kevin, when I woke up this morning and I saw that, I was thinking of you. I said, wow, man. You know, all yeah. of us through our career, we've seen a lot of things. But I don't think too many of us have seen something like you have, uh, meaning right. that GE, the monster, you know, into everything. And then all of a sudden, you're out of the Dow. And it's like, right. wow, intense, man. The question, Tom, is why? Why did this happen, right? What was the real underlying theme? Is it because the world moved away from industrial companies to consumer and finance and healthcare and technology? Is that what that is? Was that a changing uh, environment that moved GE to lose $140 billion in market cap this year? Was it poor management? I mean, yeah. let's face it, Jeff ML. You know, what should be on his gravestone is, I bought high and sold low. Oh, there's no doubt. That's what he, I mean, he got in to the oil and gas industry at the high. At the high. I, I remember that. I think oil was high. like 135 then when he bought. Yeah. Yeah. And then he sold GE Capital, which at one time, Tom, was over 40% of their revenue. And at one time, the fourth or fifth largest bank in the world, he sells that at the lows. Of the financial crisis. Yep. Right as we're coming out of it, he sells GE Capital. So this is, and you you keep making bad trades like that, Tom, you know. Yep. Eventually it's going to start showing up in your bottom line. Yeah. It, sure, it certainly has. I mean, you know, now they're shedding $20 billion. Really, in all honesty, Tom, it was just a matter of when, not if. No, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's just amazing, though. No matter how many times, right. you know, Kevin, I remember... I had a, um, a guy from Goldman that was in our office right here, and he's a tiger, and he was telling me that um, what they were selling, this is prior to the, um, prior to 2007, right? And right. he was telling me, I thought I was hearing things, he was telling me that they were putting deals together, and GE was renting their balance sheet. So the way that it would work, Goldman put a deal together, right, for a company that couldn't get the interest rate down dramatically, they would pay, pay GE like a half a percent, like shot money to bottom line sign on the line. They were signing their balance sheet. It's like, oh my God. And that's, you know, we have, we've seen that, but I think underlying that we don't even know how many more balance sheets that are actually out there that GE still has their signature on. <laughs> right. That, which right. Is, and they've got, you know, when you start spinning off pieces, that doesn't really rule out some of your legacy expenses, right? Exactly. So you've got major problems. This is a stock that is, you know, let's face it, the GE that it was, it's not like this is a peak and trough of this business. The old GE that was there is never going to be back. 
Yeah. Well, you know, it's intriguing. So, I was in Boston uh, just last weekend, right, and seeing a, um, one of the clients up in Boston, and they happen to be, so what's going on is that GE's in South Boston, as is Amazon. Well, they're right next to each other, and I, I said to this fund, I says, you know what? I says, you guys are going to have a blast. I says, I suspect that Amazon is going to take GE's lease, you know, because... Right. They, Amazon's moving another 2,000 people. That's how the world's working right now. It is. No, and and, and sure, Amazon's right. moving another 2,000 people into Boston. Sure. So it's like they got the building right next to them. Bottom, they have the land. It's like, you know what? I can, I can see that happening. It's pretty amazing, man. Yeah. It really is. It's, life goes on, right? No doubt, man. 1907. Wow. The Dow. Really, 1896, but they were out for a small period of time. They've been in the Dow since then, uninterrupted since 1907. I'm wearing dark, I'm wearing dark colors today, Tom. <laughs> yeah, no, that would make sense. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, bottom line, it gave you a great living for a long period of time, and you know, it was it was a monster. When I heard they were getting right. taken out of the Dow, my brain said, right. "What are they doing in the Dow? Are they in the Dow?" That's what I thought. Yeah, you know, which is intriguing. To you yeah, know, all we talk about is down, down, down. You know, and a twelve dollar stock. They don't want a twelve dollar stock in the Dow anyway. That's the that's the no, you don't. know yeah. And Walgreens Boots Alliance. Not a company without their own little problems, but still a good representative of where this country is right now in terms of the economy. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. Right. There's no doubt. You know, that the we, we know that the health business just keeps growing. And what's intriguing, right. though, is even Walgreens has half the market cap that GE does still. But that's... Really? Isn't that, yeah. Just okay. In, um, well, um, GE, excuse me, is like $112 billion even where it's at right now. But... That is not representative of what the Dow is supposed to be representative, right? right. As in, you know, they're struggling, yeah. dying, selling it's off their... It's all about weighted. Yeah. How it's weighted. Yeah. So, you know what? These are man-made issues. Yes. That GE, GE presented on themselves. So, uh, it, it just it is what it is, Tom. It's a sad day. I'm sure somewhere in this country, Jack Welch is sitting there and... His appetite just got ruined. Oh, for oh, sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. He, he's, he's right up uh, in the North Shore of Boston, I, I'm sure, <laughs> looking out right now saying, you got to be kidding me, man. Yeah. And he hasn't commented on any of this. No, oh, I'm sure. He's, he's, he's reserving comment for right now. Oh, right, yeah. he has to. Yeah. All right, there's no doubt. Well, I'll tell you, man, um, pretty amazing. So, hey, market-wise, uh, you know, this market was clawing its way back yesterday. I mean, you it know. It was. You know. Dow is negative, but the bottom line is that NDX and the NASDAQ and the small caps, they, it doesn't want, they, they're not going to give it up at this point. Right, exactly. You know, I think, I think uh, this market, for everything that it showed, showed some real re resiliency, and you're seeing that this morning. Yeah. Right, as, as the sellers just kind of ran out of gas, ran out of energy. So, you know, I think we got a couple earnings today that were okay. I thought uh, FedEx is down, but I thought their earnings were pretty good. Um some good, uh, you know, numbers out of mortgage apps were a good number this morning. Uh, I think crude oil is going to get really crazy here for the end of the week. Yeah. I think it's going to move. Uh, we got a number coming out today at 9.30. Uh, crude oil, that, that, that I think will move. But, you know, there's so much going on with crude oil right now. But, uh, you know, I think this, this week there's still some names out there. You know, Micron after the bell today, that, that's going to be a big. Still oh, a yeah. Big sport. time. Yeah. Right here, folks. End of earnings season, but still heavy. Totally. 45 minutes from now. Kevin, have a great one, a safe one. We look forward to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Kevin. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Thank you.
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow right now uh, just went in the red. Uh, we get the Dow down seven, NASDAQ up 45, S&P's uh, up five. Uh, we go over to this composite. So, you know, for high volatility that we've had, and you wake up in the morning and the futures are down 35 or 40, <laughs> look at the composite. <laughs> yeah. It's over its high this morning, folks. 77.68 cool. was the high that was generated last week. You got to 77.81 this morning. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, Keep going. I'm just going to okay. adjust your mic as we if, go. There. If we take a look at the uh, NDX 100, we use the Qs. What you're going to see with the Qs, uh, they're just under the high. We're up a, a buck right now. The high uh, generated 177.89. Uh, inside the NDX, let's see what's moving this baby this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, oh, yeah, the Fox. Up 6.3%. It's so, good to be a Fox shareholder when everybody's going to be, not everybody maybe, but when two big companies are going to start a bidding war for your for your assets. Right. And so the deal came down that Disney wants the, we'll no, Fo Fox, Fox said that they want the Disney deal. That's what it comes down to. Well, right? they yeah. want the Disney deal because it got raised to $71.3 billion this okay. morning. And cash and stock. Yeah. Look at that. Um, Comcast did come in with a $65 billion bid. Okay. I believe Disney's bid before that it was at least in the 50 billion area. So oh it's God, remarkable. They, they that, go up that much money. That's it's remarkable. Disney was just their first bid was somewhere in the 50s, I think. Wow. And now they're in the 70s, you know, and just like that. So they were willing to pay more than 10 billion more, and <sighs> that's how a bidding war goes. Uh, but yeah, so Disney coming in this morning. And so you had Rupert Murdoch saying a statement, we remain convinced that the combination of Fox iconic assets, brands, and franchises with Disney's will create one of the greatest, most innovative companies in the I, world. I tend to agree with them, you know, because they're both really in the movie business. Yeah. 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 You know, they're, they're yep. media business, but yeah. both of them get big, sure. you know, big studios. Sure. Yep. So that's, that's, you know, Fox popping on that news for sure. And then, so, uh, taken away from it, Starbucks. Starbucks is down uh, yeah. almost 7%. So, uh, they're closing 150 stores, which is nothing in the U.S. But you can see they're, they're, they're not growing anymore. No, and uh, part of it, the, the headline that I kept seeing in terms of what they had talked about was that same-store sales growth might come in at around 1%. 
And analysts were looking for about 3%. Yeah. And when I guess when you factor in that that's going to be every single store that they own just lost sure. 2%. Of the expectation, right, and that'd be well, a big number. And you know, I was t when I was talking about yesterday on, on the air, there are definitely a lot of other smaller coffee shops, and some of them absolutely can compete with Starbucks as to how good their coffee is, which has to be hitting them. You know what I mean? When, when I f first saw these coffee shops open, I'm like, whether it's in Tampa where you live, all the little hip places on St. Sure. Pete, it's like, oh, what are you crazy? Open a coffee shop? Sure. But guess what? They're doing business. Yeah. So if they're doing business there, then the Starbucks down the street's not doing as much business. Right. No. You know? So I guess it's a zero sum game. It, as in, if somebody's it getting it, somebody's usually losing it. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, this is going to be really dangerous the way that. Uh, little Starbucks is setting up right now because look at that definitely that's it's a consolidation folks from September of 2015 and it's coming out at the bottom of that consolidation definitely you know yeah pretty wild definitely man, man. so oil we get oil today right talk about some volatility oh, man oh yeah man let's that, pull this over and so we get an oil meeting I believe Friday okay I know right? OPEC is meeting yeah. this week for sure right um, so yeah here's here's the crude oil we'll jump over to the Nadex platform it's 1022 in the morning right now we're getting ready for those EIA numbers that come out at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Crude currently trading 65.72. So let's jump in and see what kind of opportunities we have here. Now, I jumped to the 11 a.m. expiration spreads to start things off. And what we like to do is we like to try and set up two trades where we're going to have a bullish spread and a bearish spread simultaneously. Yes. So we're really we're looking for volatility on that 10.30 a.m. EIA inventory number. So the 11 a.m.s. What we're going to have is we're going to have the option, and I say option as in possibility, yes. for 65.50 being a pivot point where we can have bullish exposure and bearish exposure. Okay. So here would be our bullish spread from 65.50 up to 67. So you Buck have a dollar, half. dollar yep. 50 in exposure. And then on the reverse, flip side of that, here is your bearish spread. Same dollar 50 going from 65.50 to 64. Now, right now, you're going to have almost 25 cents, about 22, 23 cents of intrinsic value in the bullish spread. Right, and so this is where you're gonna your expenses. Yeah, excuse me. Your this is gonna be the expensive spread because yes. you have all that intrinsic value to the upside. Yeah, and then on the flip side, your bearish spreads is just gonna be premium. Now this is looking a little bit pricey it compared is. to how we normally set these up, because we like them when they set up. If oil was trading right at the point where if right. oil was trading at 65.50. You're paying no intrinsic value on either side, yeah. and you just have this some is premium. Six bucks, five and a half pennies. All right. Yeah, right. You know, and and what you About see. Fifty-six it, cents, really, not five and a half pennies. Yeah, yeah yes, right. right. That's uh, um, fifty-six cents in the price of oil, which would be fifty-six dollars as to from what you're paying. Away from sixty-five fifty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you know, your break-even then becomes almost um, fifty. Well, it's exactly you know fifty-six cents away from that sixty-five fifty, and that's where you see this takes on a bullish bias because you have such a race, a head start to the upside. Yes. Right. You know, I mean, you have oil trading at sixty-five seventy-five. You have to break even, you only have to trade up about 25 pennies. Well, if you have to break even to the downside, you need to make up that 56 pennies all the way from 65.50. So you're yes. talking about under 65 to the downside. Right. So this trade is a nice volatility trade, especially if you might be bullish. Right. Because you already have that head start, and guess what? If you happen to get a huge move, and I mean, just. And we've the, had big moves. That's what I was just trying to jump back. Yeah. Right. We just went from 7 a.m. till what time? 9.45. We traded a dollar twenty to the upside, right? You know, and that's after trading down, up, and we're down off those levels. So oil has had some volatility. So that's the eleven o'clock. Those are the eleven a.m. Okay. expirations. So you'd have a half hour after the news comes out where you'd be live with what you have. Now jump into the noons. They line up a little bit differently in that sixty-five fifty, and this is because they get set accordingly every yeah. two hours as they open. So oil's been jumping around. You're gonna have a little bit different price levels. So sixty-six is where our pivot point could be used okay. okay and now what's interesting here is as oil jumps around a bit but this one's going to have a bearish bias okay so your bullish spread is going to be all premium because we're we're out of that spread we're, we're out of the money essentially yes so you'd be buying the bullish spread you'd be selling the bearish spread and same thing we're dealing with the dollar fifty you're selling the bearish spread you're buying the bullish spread so we're looking at about 59, pretty similar, right? But in this spread, and you can see we're up about eight pennies since we even looked at the last yes. spread, but this spread has a bearish bias because now you know we have intrinsic value to the bearish side. You know what I mean? Wild. This is the first time I think you, you can do both of those spreads. 
They're, they're both different time frames, right? Okay. 11, 11 to 12. So we're looking for volatility. You get a bullish side, a bearish side, and in both cases, you're talking 25 pennies. On so that'd be intriguing, man. We'd we'll have to look at that one. I think you're I think you're jumping ahead of the gun there with doing. I'm just saying okay. that that you, you you have if if you have no bias whatsoever, you can say okay, I'm going to do the bullish spread, I'm going to do the bearish spread, uh, so, and and you're talking about the hour differential. Okay, you know. But to put that in context, you're then putting up fifty nine dollars twice. Oh no, I understand you're putting that. Putting up a dollar eighteen. Right. Okay. Right. So you got to make money on both spreads. Maybe we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Uh, Dow right now down. 38, Nasdaq up 39, S&P's up two and a half, gold down 260, silver up, no, silver flat. Tommy, I come right back. Have those uh, oil numbers for you. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, this is uh, quite a uh, draw. Yeah. They, yeah. Oops, I'm clicking around. We'll pull it up here. So, oil inventories down 5.9 million barrels. Estimate was about a decline of 2.6 million barrels. So, you see gas inventories rising 3.28. Let's jump back to the Nadex platform, see how we're jumping around that oil market. Oh. 
And so, yeah, with, with uh, less oil than they thought, as in a decline of about almost 6 million barrels, you see in a price jump, we're up to about $66. So depending on what trade we had looked at there, and to uh, recap what we had done, the, the noon trades, we're going to have $66 kind of being our pivot point. Yeah, that so was the slightly bearish That one. would be the slightly bearish because oil was trading to call it 65.75, so we would have had about 25 cents of intrinsic value to the downside. On the flip side of that, though, the 11 AMs, we're going to have 65.50 being your pivot point, and that's where you were going to have a slightly bullish bias because 65.50, we would add about a 25 cent start to the upside. Yeah, and, that's coming in the money probably. And we got an initial jump to the upside, but man, within a few seconds, we're back to right where we were prior to that news, which is pretty remarkable considering the dramatic miss in terms of the estimate of what we're looking for. So crude, 65.81 basically right back to where we were, which is pretty remarkable prior to that number. And we're looking on that spread there, I believe it was like 50 something dollars, right? So we're, yeah. we're looking for basically a 60 something to break even on the, on the 11 yes, a.m. Yes, right. so, so it was, yes. It was, the, the whole trade was gonna cost us about $56, which right. would have represented about 56 pennies of movement we needed away from our pivot point which would be maybe you're looking above $60 in the price of crude becomes to the upside your break even for those 11 AMs. Um, pretty remarkable though that we're right back to where we were, man, yeah. on those numbers. And that's a, that's a big drawdown. That is a big drawdown for sure. That is definitely a and big And let's drawdown. just jump over it and see the full breakdown of these numbers. And I like when they give us the full breakdown. Where are we? There we are, perfect. So here's your number, the number coming in, crude, decline of 5.9 million barrels, estimate was around 2.5, that's your headline number. Yeah. Cushing crude declined 1.2, pad three crude declined about 700,000. Look at the gasoline miss as well. Up charge. Yeah, gasoline was looking for a decline of about a million. And a build. A build of 3.2, uh, so it's that's like what's, a, That's what's common, that oil market down probably. Okay, you know? okay. Uh, distillates, pretty similar build in terms also. of a, a yeah. build, and they were looking for a decline. Um, yeah. So yeah. when you look at that, you know, it's the, the, the crude, of course, you know, none of us use crude. We use the products off the crude and the products off the crude, you know, bottom line are up pretty good. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. Pretty remarkable. We'll yeah. jump back one more time before we jump away. But yeah, 6570, right where we're sitting at before. So we'll see. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for that market to siphon through yeah. all that information and see where we end up. And that's where, you know, the time value gets pretty cool too and today yeah. what happened is that the 230s just didn't line up they today. didn't yeah they yeah. were because oil has been jumping around so much throughout the day they just had price points that would have been either maybe like 65 dollars would have been a point there was just too much intrinsic value in those spreads right. to really make sense for a short-term volatility trade so let's go over and take a look at uh fedex so fedex come out with numbers last night um you know bottom line market saying well you come out with good numbers but i'm selling you down down seven bucks. And I think there was a little bit of negativity in those numbers too, though, in terms of forecasts. Okay, let's see what we got. So FedEx adjusted earnings per share. Let's see. Their operating margin, 11.5%. You know, it, that's adjusted operating margin. That's not a big operating margin for spending hundreds of millions of dollars, huh? You know? it's. Different businesses, just different operating margins, yes. right? Yeah. Can't to make too many mistakes if you're only operating with 11% margin. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what standard margins are in terms of that industry. I mean, it seems like that's not a bad margin either. In oh, in that industry, doing, it probably is. I'm know, just saying margins in general. Sure, you know what I sure, mean? It's yeah. like, you know. Yeah. So ground, the ground operating margin is pretty good, 17.3. It's That's not bad. Earnings per share, they had estimated... Uh, Fourth quarter, five dollars and sixty-nine cents. They're gonna do five ninety-one. Revenue seventeen point two. They're thinking seventeen point three. And I think this is where. So let's see. The fiscal year nineteen earnings per share seventeen to seventeen sixty, and the estimate was seventeen forty-eight. So okay. maybe they're wondering if that's going to be in the yeah, lower end, right. um, as in the right. middle of that seventeen thirty. So really, right. they're coming in somewhere around seventeen thirty. Estimate was seventeen forty-eight, and I think that was part of what they were looking at was that. Just kind of full year. Yeah, let, let's go see what, what's what's happening with UPS. Yeah. So, UPS only well, down 61 cents. You know this and UPS. Bottom line, the the you know, still hanging at the highs. So when do they come out with numbers? Let's see. They're coming out the 26th of July. 
So that's quite a while. Yeah. Uh, Micron. Kevin was saying Micron's coming out after the close today. So yeah. Micron, 59 bucks. Look at the, the low for the year. Past, uh, yeah, the 12 months. 12 months, yep. 26, the high 64. You're at 59. Let's see what kind of bread these guys do. Big numbers. Definitely. They're looking to, for 7.8 billion in revenue. Look at that earnings from 2016, barely making six pennies wow. on the year, to 2019, $11 a share. Boy, once they get to a certain point, they ex yeah. it goes and exponential. And realistically, it's like they've oh, gone yeah. from revenue of they 12, bought 12 billion yeah. to 32. No, I don't know if they necessarily. Look at that. I don't know if they bought somebody. That's that was, intense. I mean, they've had they've had some some amazing growth. I mean, um, yeah. Asia, they're yeah, growing by nine percent. U.S. two point seven. Europe two point three. Uh, two point eight. Yeah, maybe they did because that doesn't equate to ten percent growth. So maybe they did. Yeah, pretty yeah. intense. The uh, NVDA. Let's go take a look at Nvidia. Uh, that baby. So that's August 9th. They're not coming out. That's hanging at highs too. Pretty amazing, man. Uh, Amazon. Let's go look at the King. When are they going to get into the shit? Look at business, this, man. New highs. You know what was amazing? If you heard um, the Draghi, the uh, European Central Bank uh, president today, I was surprised inside his speech today. He was saying that there is no conclusive evidence in Europe, this would be, that the e-commerce has uh, brought down inflation. Okay. And it was really intriguing listening to him. It, it, you know, he says, we understand that in the aspect of people think that e-commerce has brought it down. Perception. Sure. Yeah. And he was said, we have not found no evidence, factual evidence, that that has happened. He says, what has happened, he says, we know the composition of the retail in general, okay? But I, I thought, I, was, I found that really surprising. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. show me the data then, right? Oh, I, mean, I know, which is great. Is no, that's what was cool. I, I, you often I, hear I love hearing it. I mean, Amazon is so cheap, Amazon is so cheap, and then you look at it and it's like, right. I said to you about your paper towels, man, I still haven't gotten the memo as to right. the price you're paying. You right. think you're saving bundles. Right. I haven't seen the I'm prices, sa man. I'm probably saving time. Right. That's it, right. 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 You know, right. I mean, um, so that's, many times they might not be the cheapest. You see, the right. likes of Best Buy can now compete with Amazon. For TVs on price? Yes. I mean, that's where, you know. Oh, no, no, no. I, the, the last TV I bought, I bought it at Best Buy. But right. what I did is that I had my oh, yeah. phone with me. I just brought it up, and he said, oh, no problem. We'll, we'll match that. Sure. Right. Was, you know, there was no, it was, yeah, no yeah. problem. Pretty cool. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 33. NASDAQ's up 40. S&P's are up 3. Come right back. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, 
the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN. TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is down 52. Nasdaq uh, up 41. S&Ps are up 250. Let's go over to Facebook because yesterday I was reading the story that they said it's only a matter of time that Facebook, uh, meaning days, that Facebook starts selling ads on uh, what's the name of that that you and Jay always did? The remember the big company WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Okay. okay. Because the guy had resigned. Um, that, yes, the, the yeah. creator of WhatsApp resigned right. in the wake of what's going on kind yeah. of with and the security, the privacy deals. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, see, they... they, they okay, so that's Facebook Messenger, though. That's not... Okay. Oh, that's different? Okay. Oh, that's different. Is that what you're talking about? No, no. It, yesterday, the story was on WhatsApp, that they thought that there was a story out there that they thought it's only a matter of time, meaning not a lot of time that Facebook would start pushing okay. ads out because what they were saying is that they were finding I get the story they were finding uh, maybe jump down a bit we're only to 8 in the morning so far and then yeah if I, it, even if it was yesterday uh, and, and what it was is that they were saying that every corner uh, oh there it is every every nook and every corner okay. that Facebook was finding uh, places to sell uh, their advertisements yeah you know? so along with their controversies as of late uh, let's see, different types of ads in the marketplace, like um, it's Craigslist like section. So they have, yeah, a sell where you can buy and sell merchandise. I've checked that out. So maybe they have ads in there. Facebook stories, they have, that's like their Snapchat like video diaries. Okay. Um, so any minute now, I expect WhatsApp will start carrying advertisements for the first time. Its CEO quit over the disagreement. So who is saying this? I think it's just an analyst. It's okay. Just, just, yeah. Okay. It's an, yeah, it's an opinion analyst, you know, that, okay. but it, it's amazing that today Facebook is breaking highs, you know, it's yeah. down, you know, up four bucks. Yeah. It's like, okay, game is on here. Yes. You know, regardless of what, uh, yeah, and this is quite a move, man. I mean, if, if we just, so, yeah, I mean, look at the price spread. You, you, you're moving away from the highs, like, pretty quickly. Oh, that's remarkable. Isn't I mean, it? We were, you know. March 29th, we're at 150. We're at 200. That's right. a 33 percent rise. I mean, right. if, if you're buying that stock on margin, which you know that's not really risky at 150 to be buying it on margin because Facebook isn't going away anytime soon. No. And you're you're Boku bucks. You know, yes. I mean, just I mean, Big you're literally, you know, you're buying it on 50 percent margin at 150. You're putting up 75 bucks. You already just made 50 bucks. You're up 66 percent on your investment in the span of two months buying a company like Facebook, which. Which is, you're right. You're not going to lose 66% of your money probably at 50 
mm -hmm. uh, at 150. So it's a mm -hmm. remarkable return. You know, another uh, now this whole sector has moved because uh, the, this morning, um, look at this. Yeah, this you is had yesterday, right? Yeah, Canada, this their is, Senate passing this, legalization. Yep, this is canopy growth. Yep, uh, and just hit an all-time high. Now this 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 one kills me because I didn't get it, and it had a high high volume high, 44 bucks. I was wanted. I figured we'd get down to the, the, the twenty eighty five. It gets down to twenty three eighty eight. Okay. And never look back. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how this happens in terms of how this shakes out. Because I was reading some interesting articles yesterday, just talking about how in the worldwide landscape, how now that Canada is one of the, not one of, it's the first, first wealthy G7. nation yep. to to legalize marijuana on a recreational basis right and what's going to happen there is that there's a number of trees that are signed by the countries that speak to you know just so we we sign treaties just so Canada can't all of a sudden make whatever they want legal because oh. obviously that's ramifications on the country bless you I see okay on our allies yeah so they're actually going to be in violation of some of these treaties of legalizing a drug that's in those treaties that's Basically, so it's as in, how is that going to shake out? And maybe then it's going to negate those treaties, and then maybe other countries can act quicker to legalize the recreational okay. basis. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a big deal up there, man. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. You know, and right. they expect, I don't know, another two to three months, uh, all those dispensaries will be ready. Yeah, and they still have to deal with the local regulations as to how they're going to shape those. Right? And, and, and a that, couple of the provinces, the province is the only one that's selling it, like yes. Ontario. Yeah, the province, know? yeah. So they'll, you know, dollar-wise, it's going to be big money up there. Yes, tax-wise, right, for sure, everything, yeah. yeah. Pretty wild, man. Definitely. You know, and that's, and, you know, so if we go and we take a look at that stock, I mean, the, the growth in these equities here, man, it's pretty, uh, and this is the birth of a nation, uh, birth of an industry, I mean, yeah. you, see, um, you, you know, know. In, for right in front of our faces, right? I mean, the birth of a legal industry, it's right. been illegal for yeah. a while, it's right. been there, that's that's what's so remarkable. Well, that's, if, if we look at here, yeah, Trudeau was pretty cool when he actually, he tweeted out this morning. Yeah, he, he and they ran on this, Trudeau ran on this yeah, he in did. 2015. He, he, he tweet, and, tweeted out the deal that, guess you know, what? Regulate now, it. Yeah. Now, now the, you know, the, the bottom line is that uh, it's going to go. Ah, uh, you're back a whole week there. Okay, it's, it's, it's going to go from the aspect of, you know, people making money illegal on it, and you know, versus the government. Right. You know, which, right. Which is as in it's already there. Right. It's already, and that would be the same, my opinion, in in the U.S. It exactly. Would. It would. There's no you doubt. Know, the market exists. It's just underground, and why not tax it, regulate it? Right. I can't see where we're looking, but um, but yeah, passed the Senate yesterday, so onward and upward Canada goes. And this company here, so this is where it's going to get really wild, I think, folks, is that uh, this is the first company that you had the liquor company come in and buy 10% of it. That's Constellation Brands. Yes. And, you know, they're into distribution, right? It's it's going to be uh, Ambev. I just Ambev. Yeah, I yeah. expect that's that's who are they going to buy? Oh, for you sure. You know what I mean? Right. If you're sitting in the in the same with the cigarette companies too, right. in terms of right. um, if you're in the cigarette and booze business, I'm sure you want to be in the pop business. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. Nothing like being in the vice business. Yeah, exactly. Right, I'm telling you. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Yeah, uh, Netflix. Uh, Netflix continues higher. That wants to finish that ABC structure up. Look at this thing, man. Four twelve. Pretty cool, and that's 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 up 100 percent in six months, folks. There it is, 185 six months ago. <laughs> that's how you, that's hard to comprehend. It is because it's even more than 100 percent. Yeah, it, it is, it is more than percent, but it's it, crazy. It's, it is. Yeah, 100 percent would be 370, right? Right, it's exactly. 412. You know? So if we owned it, we'd be saying, "Oh my God, it's yeah. more than." And again, that's a company that it wouldn't have been too risky to be on margin. You know, whereas you're really not going to see a Netflix from that price level um, cascade. Something like you know, we just it's not like a pharma company where I'd say, What are you doing being on margin where you yep. might lose 50 60 percent in one day? Um, look yeah, at, look at Netflix how they're still growing some volatility, but right D domestic, they're growing at 16 and a half percent, internationally, they're growing yeah. at 57 percent, definitely 57 percent. And now you're, you're growing something at 57 percent that's already doing five billion dollars, yes. <laughs> Five billion. How about the domestic DVD? I, you know, nothing, and <laughs> this beautiful. is not backed into their growth at all because they're shrinking, but man. Any other company would kill to be taking in a half a billion dollars a year, and uh, and that's an afterthought. As in, they just keep it around because why not, man? Well, you know what I bet? I bet that a lot of the folks that are probably about 
seven years younger than you don't even know that they ever did domestic DVDs. Sure, right. And I, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Because you'd be close. I would be close. You'd be close. I, I had you know a I mean? DVD plan at one point when Netflix, okay. I right. did. And, right. um, you know, I can't remember the last time I used a DVD player, to be fair. So, yeah. And I have one at home, though, because I do have DVDs. But I can't remember the last time, because why? Pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We'll check that oil market. Uh, we're coming up to the top of the hour. Uh, Dow right now down 39. NASDAQ up 43. S&P's up 3.5. Come right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now down 37. Nasdaq up 50. S&P's up four and a half. Uh, let's see where uh, oil is. Uh, yeah, so ooh, look at that. A little bit of oscillation around kind of where we are, but pretty remarkable with such a miss to the downside yes. that the price has actually declined prior to, from where we were prior. So oil, we're trading 65, call it 60 right now. And we were trading up there about 65.80 prior to that news. So, you know, to recap again, we had the 11 AMs, expirations. That's where we were going to be using 65.50 as our 
kind of pivot point, which would have given us a little bit of a bullish bias. Right. That one, we're coming back almost to our max loss position. Right. And the noons would have had 66 as your pivot point. So that's where we would have had a little bit of a bearish bias and to pull up. So all your value right now would be in the bearish spread, which is where you had that head start. And so right now, as we're approaching, you know, you'd have about $45 in value for that $66 one. But um, in general, you're looking for more action than we're getting, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're... we're 15, 20 cents away from where we were prior to the news. And uh, if you had made that trade, you'd probably be a little disappointed either way because yes. you should see some volatility with a miss to the tune of millions of barrels. And particularly because we had the volatility of a, a dollar. 25 definitely prior i mean was, was that oh. from six o'clock this morning maybe yeah, yeah. i mean you're talking right. about really from seven we traded from 64 yeah. 80 all right. the way up to 66 you're talking about a dollar 20 move in a couple hours right ahead of the news and then you get the news it's a big miss and the market just kind of shakes it off yeah. and just hanging around and you know it's intriguing it's like okay so is the market waiting for friday it's like okay what are you gonna yeah. tell us friday opec's a big deal for sure yeah for yeah. sure pretty wild definitely uh broad market bottom line you get a flat market out here deal you know, dow's down 41 nasdaq well Nasdaq's not flat. Nasdaq's up 50. NDX up 48. The tech stocks, they're running. Tale of two stories, for sure. Big there. time. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. we got our swim lessons coming up next. And then, of course, we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get them, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.